Well, skies are not in the clear just yet, and I'll show you the back-to-school forecast that will have you grabbing for a raincoat as you head out the door. And all that rain made a mess of some valley roads. I'll show you the routes you can take to avoid the traffic. Plus, it's the most wonderful time. Well, I guess for some parents, it is Christmas in August because they're jumping for joy today. Their kids are headed back to school. Some parents, though, less than thrilled. It is the first day of school, and we're live with everything you need to know about back to school, including what you should do if the school bus hasn't picked your kid up this morning. Welcome to a brighter morning. This is 8 News Now with Kale and Kirsten. Neighborhood weather with Sherry. And beat the traffic with Brian. All right, everyone. Uh, welcome to a big Monday morning. That's for sure. It is Monday. Back to school <laughs> time. Parents jubilant, if you will. But we got all this mess to deal with, don't of we? Of course Carol? we do. Look at this. Our first school bus live shot of New Year. Ken and Chopper 8. And a little difficult to make out with the digital break up there. But that bus is stopped at an intersection that is absolutely polluted with all sorts of gunk. Yeah, I know. That same area that they were actually able to capture yesterday. This was taken near Bill Bray Elementary at Fort Apache and Brent. I can, of course, see all that rushing water yesterday. And, of course, the cars and trucks doing what they are not supposed to do, driving right in the middle of it, Kale. And just to remind you, that is a major intersection there that looked anything but yesterday during the heavy rain. So it is the first day of school. If it's not hectic enough, Mother Nature threatening to add more stress throughout the day. That's right. But don't worry. We have you covered with live team coverage. Patanya standing by with how the county is dealing with the school bus rush this morning. And Lauren Rosella live near a school in an area that was hit hard, as we were mentioning, by yesterday's storm. We're going to get to our reporters in a moment. Brian, of course, obviously helping you navigate through the extra traffic on the roads today because of school and we've already had at least one major accident and then Sherry keeping a close eye on rain that is already in some parts of Clark County this morning, Sherry. Yeah, you know, we've got some soggy areas to deal with. Some kids are going to have to get through the rain to get to school and for us here in the Las Vegas Valley, cloudy skies and just kind of waiting for and the rain. If you're facing an intersection like we just saw, don't drive through. It does not take a lot of water to become a problem. Absolutely. I'm surprised that truck just barreled right through from the video that we saw from yesterday. Cloudy skies. It's dark. There's heavy moisture in the air. You can feel just how heavy the air is. Let's get right to it. Uh, we've got that radar showing green over uh, the eastern half of Clark County. So we've had rain from Laughlin up through Searchlight all the way up through the the eastern side of the county into Overton as well as Mesquite. This will continue to head to the north and it's just on the eastern brink of the Las Vegas Valley. It's just lurking out there over the uh, Arizona state line. And it looks like eventually it will give a little push to make its way into the Las Vegas Valley. But it might just hold off long enough to get the kids out the door and on their way to school. Five hundredths of an inch of rain up in Overton already this morning. It's 74 degrees in that area. We've got a lot of 70s around the Las Vegas Valley this morning, but the humidity is matching the temp and is beating it up over 85 percent in many neighborhoods this morning. So there's plenty of potential out there to get those showers going. It looks like the chance for rain will stay with us all day, kids, as you're headed back to the classroom. 83 degrees for the afternoon high is going to be about it. And Kirsten and Kale, again, it looks like some of these showers could lead to some flooding if some of them turn with some heavy rain like we saw yesterday. So hopefully everybody's going to have a safe Monday getting back to school today. We sure hope, Sherry. Thanks. Of course, it, not all of the valley a mess, but in the northwest yeah. part especially, for some kids at certain schools, it's going to be difficult getting to the classroom. Yeah, we've showed you overhead pictures, of course, with Ken and Chopper A to the area near Brent Lane and Fort Apache. It looks like basically a landslide hit yep. just a huge intersection. And we've got Lauren Rosella live there where kids are going to face a little bit of problem in that area today. Kirsten, we've already seen kids just trying to walk through this enormous pile of dirt. It, it is right. It, it does look like a landslide hit basically this entire intersection. Uh, there's some kids that were waiting over there in the corner. We have a school bus is kind of just stuck over here because there's really no way to get through at this point. We've already had some confusion with the school buses this morning. This is only adding to those problems. And again, I think Kirsten, you said it. Kale, you said it. We've got cars already trying to come 
come through this area, which is what you're absolutely not supposed to be doing. It can ruin your car and present a lot of problems to the kids and the pedestrians that are trying to navigate this area. And we want you to take a look at some of the video that we shot uh, yesterday. This is as the flooding was hitting Sunday. Hundreds of motorists were stranded on the 95. Sunday, the floodwaters pushed the debris onto the highway, shutting down the 95 from horse all the way to Highway 160. Nevada Highway Patrol officers tell us large boulders were blocking the roadway going south and flooding made it impossible for them to open the highway to the north, leaving many drivers across the valley stuck. Drove down this way, it was flooded. Drove that way, it was flooded. So we decided to get in the middle and wait. We're a little anxious, a little anxious. I mean, you kind of hopefully feels like you're starting to see lights up in the distance there. Hopefully we're going to get through here. 8 News Now was also there as the washes near Kyle Canyon Road filled with water. NDOT crews were working late into the night clearing debris from the roadways with bulldozers. But obviously back out here live, they did not get to everything. Uh, still a lot of problems out here for some of these kids trying to get to James Bilbray Elementary School. It's a school that's just up the street here, and this is one of the main roads trying to get up to that school. So we're not really sure exactly what the plan is to try and get some of these buses that are out here back up to the school, but definitely some creative solutions, I'm sure, in the works this morning. And we also did talk to NV Energy. About 900 customers were without power last night. We did get an update from them. They now say only about 60 people are in the dark, and all of those outages are related to the flooding. Reporting live, Lauren Rosella, 8 News Now. Hey, Lauren, really quick, those rocks, are those, those, those almost look like small boulders, some of them that are behind you. We're not just talking small rocks. Yeah, we're not talking just small rocks. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. This is what some of these cars are dealing with out here. They're driving right over them in some cases, and it's preventing some pretty big problems. We've got these cars going straight through here, and I think, you know, we said it earlier, you're really not supposed to do that. It can really damage your car and present some dangers to people out on the roadways. That's going to be a long cleanup, yeah, at least really at that is. intersection. Yes. Lauren, we appreciate it. Thanks. And it's already a madhouse out there this morning. We already see, like, the main thoroughfares look like parking lots themselves. We saw a lot of a lot of lights at about 5 a.m. with yeah. Brian Loftus standing by with the traffic report. We don't usually see slowdowns that early. Yeah, usually not that early. Usually it's in the peak window of commute, which is 6.30 to 8.30. But uh, we got hit early on I-15 with an accident that is causing a parking lot of a backup all the way up to now Sahara. Now, the accident site, this is I-15 and Flamingo Express lanes clogged up as well as general Purpose. Let's go to that accident reported with minor injuries. Emergency responders are taking their time to get this fully clear. They're working as hard as they can, but the reality is this is a heavily traveled area, and until it's fully cleared, please avoid southbound I-15. Parents, if you're taking the kids uh, in, in a commute that involves southbound travel, average speed is 11 miles per hour. You want to avoid that area. State Route 157, Kyle Canyon, portions of it closed. Please avoid it because portions of it, frankly, just washed away. Now, up northwest, Ken's at an intersection where we're seeing people People drive through, some making the good, sensible decision to turn around. Ken, with the ruts and grooves in the road, you don't know how deep it is. Yeah, you know, it's going to be a tough one, especially for your suspension and uh, maybe the undercarriage of your vehicle, depending on how thick some of these rocks are that you drive over. This is going to be right at Iron Mountain in Fort Apache, and you can see it was a giant mud flow that came down here from the U.S. 95 area. There's really not a lot stopping this water from coming down the Kyle Canyon area, and it makes its way right here at some of these newest developments up here at the northwest side of the Las Vegas Valley. And there you go. Here's more of these vehicles trying to traverse through all this mud and dirt and gunk here. They're willing to do it. The school buses, they're having a big debate right now. we got three different school buses right here trying to decide whether or not they can even make it across. At the moment, they are not uh, deciding not to go out here and cross over. And one more area I'll show you. It's going to be right around El Capitan at Iron Mountain there and more mud. This water just kept flowing all over the place up here in the northwest side of the valley. So we'll continue to follow this. So I'm going to go check out Kyle Canyon Road here coming up at our next report. And uh, I saw it a little bit earlier. Portion of the road is washed out. We'll have details on that coming up. So don't go anywhere. We'll send it back to you guys. All right. Thanks yeah, that very road much, closed. Yeah. So we'll look forward to that. Mm -hmm. Now you showed us those school buses, and if your kids are taking the school bus, the key today is to be extra alert, extra patient, of course. And the weather and those conditions, road conditions, throwing a real curveball. Yeah. Patranya Poonswan with some good information. She is live with tips uh, for parents to keep in mind on back to school Monday. Good morning, Pat.
Hey, good morning there. Hey, you know what? It's it's dry out here so far. So for now, everything should be on schedule. The buses should be running on time. They do expect a little bit of a delay. So that's kind of the tip for you. If your kids are taking the bus, make sure you get to the bus stops early. But also, first day of school, you say for lots of kids, but also the first day of school for the superintendent, the brand new superintendent of Clark County School District, Pat Skorkowski. We're so happy to have you with us this morning outside of Graxton Elementary. I know you're stopping at different campuses today. Talking is a big day for you but also a lot of pressure as well, right? Because people do expect a lot of big things for you this year. So what's your focus right now? What are you thinking? Well, first we want to make sure we get every student in the door and then we can actually start the teaching. So really focus in on getting everybody in safely and then making sure that our teachers have what they need to be successful in that classroom this year. So what are you telling the teachers? I know there were big trainings the past couple of weeks. What are you telling the teachers? You've been a teacher for so many years, 25 years in the school district. So you're in a new role now as a leader. What are you telling them? And because you say that students Student achievement is your number one focus. It's the student achievement is the number one focus. It's also about people because 90% of our budget is people. So I tell them I know exactly what they're they're getting ready for this morning. I could never sleep the night before I started a new school year. And so I'm telling them that you know everything that they do needs to be focused on the student, focused on ensuring their success, and being able to make sure that we are increasing that student achievement over time. All right, and we w we wanted you to just ask real quick, you know, with the weather coming down northwest, you see all that. Have you heard of any problems in schools right now, weather related? We have a couple of places that we are watching very closely out at um, the northwest around Iron Mountain and Fort Apache, which is around uh, Bilbray and Schirkenbach Elementary Schools, and then some areas around Arborview High School. So we're watching that very carefully. I'm getting phone calls as we wait, so so we're hoping that everything will go smoothly out in that area of town. All right, Pat, thank you so much for joining us this thank morning, and we'll have more on the first day of school coming up in the next half hour. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Petronio. Petronio, we appreciate it. Uh, well, you know what? We're going to switch gears and go from school to the, uh, well, what some people do at the end of their careers, retirement. Yeah. Are you getting the most out of your retirement savings account? It's a very valid question. Michelle Mortensen cutting through the confusion of your 401k statements to show you where you could actually be throwing away thousands of dollars in the long run. You got All right, well, Sherry will be joining us in a moment, but one of the fun things about living in Las Vegas is a lot of well-known people, celebrities, yeah. watch our newscast in the morning. Yes. And you have told me this before, and I didn't believe it, but Mike Tyson watches us. I was on a flight Saturday, and Mike was sitting right behind me. I didn't know about this. And I didn't tell you about it. Wow. But you told me a couple times. Yes. But Mike, is, he said he would watch this morning. He watches the 6 a.m. hour. Oftentimes, he's at the gym getting ready for his day. Yes, I know he chatted with George Knapp, and he, he mentioned his morning workouts and uh, the possibility of being an 8 News Now viewer. This is great. Yeah, I love this it surprise. Was, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> fun to be a nice guy. And, and uh, you were right. I always thought yes. you were full of it. Hey, you, <laughs> <laughs> usually before the show, we talk about this kind of stuff, you kept it a secret. I did. Well it was played, a good sir. Good surprise, yeah. by Kale. Cool. Yeah. And by the way, yes. that was he. He were just posing there. I, I, yeah. I wouldn't even dare. Now, now this was not superimposed, right? That was really that Mike was a and real Kale. picture. Yeah. In, in, uh, he was in seat two C. I was in one uh, A. That's very cool. Well, very fun. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, Mother Nature could strong arm us again. Give us a one-two punch. We've got clouds out there. The sun is on its way up, but not very bright. Uh, not a very bright sunrise at all from our Red Rock Casino Resort camera. And you can see the cleanup will continue today as we see a picture here from the debris left in the road at El Capitan and Grand Teton in the northwest part of the valley. Let's hope we don't have too much of a repeat of scenes like this today. Over four inches of rain that fell up there at Kyle Canyon Road. Beltway and Cheyenne picked up nearly two inches of rain yesterday. Aliante about an inch and a third. Angel Park almost an inch of rain. Fort Apache in the Beltway about half an inch of rain. So various neighborhoods Neighborhoods picked up various amounts, but I have to say, East Side and South Valley neighborhoods, you just didn't really get much of anything. Those uh, cells really concentrated on the mountains and the northwest side of town. Flood watch in effect until 8 o'clock. You can see the rain that's been sliding up now across I-15. We've got a little cell that's getting heavier out there, and all of this is that tropical moisture that's coming in from the leftovers of what was Tropical Storm Evo west of Baja. And I mean, this is a big train of moisture with flood watch is all across the desert.
desert today. So some of these cells can drop some very heavy rainfall again today, and there's a good chance of uh, rain today into tomorrow, about a 30% chance for Wednesday. So we go from 80s to low 90s tomorrow, Brian, and then back to mid to upper 90s as we get through the week. So quite a different week in August for us. Hey, taking a look at a flooded intersection. Hey, Sherry, how cool is it that Iron Mike is a viewer? Love that. I love it too. From Iron Mike to Iron Mountain in Fort Apache, that's a problem intersection reported right now. This is some flooding at an intersection last night. Again, you just cannot tell how deep the intersection will be with all the ruts and grooves in our roadway. So please avoid it, turn around, and make sure you don't try to drive on through. Look at these cars trying to drive and instead tapping the brake pedal all the way down southbound I-15 because of this lingering crash that continues to block lanes at 15 South and Tropicana, causing a nightmare commute. Please avoid I-15. Delays now from Tropicana up to Charleston. Now we're going to go to Ken in Chopper 8. He's near State Route 157, Kyle Canyon, where portions of it are closed. Here's our first live looks. Yeah, this is uh, really ugly here. The folks at NDOT, some of their engineers are already out here bright and early this morning trying to assess the damage and trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do as the entire integrity of the road, the underbelly of the road, if you will, was completely washed out by the flash floods that happened yesterday afternoon and buckled down into the ground. Now, the question is, is whether or not they can do one-way traffic control, but the possibility and what engineers will have to assess is whether or not the integrity of the road on the other side is strong enough to hold traffic or not. So that's what they have to determine right now. Of course, Kyle Canyon is shut down right there at US 95. Uh, the alternate routes are going to have to go all the way over to Lee Canyon Road up and over the mountains. It's definitely going to be a very big alternate route for the folks in the town of Mount Charleston. The folks up here just cannot get a break unfortunately this morning. We're going to continue to scour the area up here in the northwest side of the valley and we'll see what else we find. We'll send it back to you Kale and Kirsten. Ken, thanks. Yeah, I'd be worried about that one lane that's still Seriously. there. It looks like the water went all the way underneath, yeah. so we'll keep you updated on that. There are worries that a sinkhole, meantime, developing under South Valley Street. After the break, Brian looks into this big concern after water started bubbling to the surface of the road. It's coming up in today's What's Driving You Crazy. And we are back. Welcome back. 622 Monday morning, and it's going to be a long day for engineers with. Uh, and dot that is the Kyle Canyon Road there, right to near US 95, which is closed for good reason. You can see that a good portion of one lane washed away. But as Ken mentioned again, and as he zooms in there, the concern being that the water may have gone all the way underneath mm -hmm. the entire road, and that uh, other lane may collapse as well. So it remains closed. We'll keep you updated on that. Well, not everyone listened uh, to turn around uh, the turn around don't drive ads. They did not, Kale. Check out these pictures taken by Melissa Smitty. You see the driver of this white truck tried to make its way through the rushing waters near Grand Teton and Oso Blanco. Didn't get far. Las Vegas Fire and Rescue had to help them out. If you have any pictures or video and you want to share them, be sure to send them to us at pics at 8newsnow.com or just post them mm -hmm. to our Facebook page. And again, you know, they have that warning out there, but each time you see the folks who don't pay attention Well, there to were it. some rescues that went on out there yesterday. Oh, Brian, yeah, and Brian, a lot of roads washed away with saw Kyle Canyon, but talk of a sinkhole. Yeah. Yeah, a sinkhole, different kind of water issue. This one's down in Henderson, and a reminder on the uh, last issue, uh, just a foot of water can float many vehicles, two feet of water, an SUV. Now, switching back to this sinkhole, uh, the question, I've seen water on the road near Green Valley uh, on Arroyo Grande by Mayan Drive. It runs 24 hours a day and has been doing this for a year. Could this be a developing sinkhole? This area, uh, Robert, very familiar to Henderson for having long-standing groundwater issues. There's parts of Henderson where groundwater table is shallow and water bubbles up to the surface, escaping pipes, valve, and covers to break the surface. It may appear to be a water leak, but it is groundwater, which is more prevalent in the summer with increased irrigation in the monsoon season. But still, Henderson wanted to make sure there is no risk of a sinkhole, so they have opened up the street to inspect water lines and valves. They found no leaks, no undercutting, and no sinkhole developing. They've taken dozens of samples to verify that it's just groundwater. Now, Robert, they still hired a geotechnical engineering firm to find why is this groundwater so consistent? Once these engineers weigh in, the city will either replace the roadway sub-base material or install a French drain, which is pipes with holes in the top, so that the groundwater collects in the pipe diverting the water to a downstream location such as Pittman Wash. This should dry up the road, but again, this is not and never was a sinkhole risk, but a great question. What's driving you crazy? Send your question to Traffic 8 at 8newsnow.com.
Well, it turns out people just aren't saving like they should for retirement. A new study shows 45% of people do not have a dime saved. Scary. Yeah. And others who are saving aren't saving enough. Eight on your size, Michelle Mortensen recently discovered many of you may be in for a rude awakening when it comes time to cash in your 401k. Most of us get 401k statements in the mail. And if you're anything like me, you never look at them. But there's something in these statements we should all be looking for tiny fees. These tiny fees, sometimes referred to as hidden fees, could be eating up a good chunk of your retirement. And when I say a good chunk, we're talking tens of thousands of dollars. A penny here and a penny there may not seem like much, but when talking about your retirement, all these pennies can really add up. Tiny, seemingly insignificant fees to your 401k over time can take away nearly 30% of everything that you've saved. Isn't it hard to know that 30% of your retirement was taken from you for silly fees? Oh yes, yes absolutely. Les and Ross Sims just found yeah, out how this. much of their retirement was eaten away by fees. Money. I figure it's maybe about 20,000, 30,000, easy. Over the years. Look closely at your statements. In the tiny fine print, you'll see all the fees you'll pay. Annual fees, trading fees, marketing fees, management fees. The list goes on and on. And here's how it costs you. Let's say your 401k had a gain of 10% one year. And it also had 3% in tiny hidden fees. That leaves you with only a 7% gain. Not too bad. But let's say it's a bad year and you lost 10%. Well, you actually lost a whole lot more, 13% because of those fees. I mean, you need two good years just to make up for one bad year. That's Adam Goodman, a retirement specialist. If you're 60 and you have your money in the market twice over the last 10 years, within a, a two year period, there was a 40, 50% 40, drop. And he says not watching your retirement is like gambling. People don't think that they're gambling with their retirement being having in the market, but they are. It happened. It happens. Red line is over here. He actually compares these the fees line. and not watching your 401k to a game of roulette and putting all you have on red or black. Some people and they're taking a bigger gamble than they think. Protecting yourself from a big loss isn't difficult though. Lesson Ross did it with a few changes, moving 401ks to annuities. What's the future look like now? Oh, it looks good. So good. Can I jump in the back or something? <laughs> They've already retired. This is how we act too. And they're just in their late 50s. We plan, that's the, no, that's the it's, main it's thing. Good. You have to plan. Michelle Mortensen for eight on your side. I will trade places with them. <laughs> 401ks are not bad. Most retirement specialists recommend contributing so you can at least get your employer's match if you have one. Most say don't put all your eggs in one basket. Diversify with things like uh, Roth IRAs or also annuities. Monsoon season is not over just yet. No, it's not. As we were reminded uh, yesterday, in the next half hour, our live team coverage of the storms continues. And we'll hear from kids, some of them already having some issues getting to school for the first day of class. More rain in the forecast after Sunday's flooding. I'll show you where the storms are coming from as the week gets underway. Plus, roads are still clogged with debris. Ken Smith is high overhead in Chop Rate with a bird's eye view of the areas that you're going to want to avoid. It is the first day of students in Clark County, and also it's the first day for the new man at the helm of CCSD. And we talk live with the new school superintendent, Pat Skorkowski, about the unique challenges he's facing this year and, of course, the experience he has under his belt that could certainly help lead to a successful school year. Welcome to a brighter morning. This is 8 News Now with Kale and Kirsten. Neighborhood weather with Sherry. And beat the traffic with Brian. All right, we are going to start with a live picture from Chopper 8. Ken is above a car, clearly 
caught in a lot of rushing water, then this is an intersection because there's a stop sign right there. And of course, we've been warning drivers. We did it all weekend. Long turnaround. Don't drown. We don't know the situation involved with this particular scenario, but it just does not look good from this viewpoint, does it? This Kale? is Grand Canyon and Grand Teton. It is an intersection. Now, we don't know how long the car has been there or not. We can see as Ken zooms out. At least on the top of the screen there, they do have some, uh, looks like to be police tape out to keep cars out of that intersection. And we've seen this already this morning. Another situation where a school bus can't go anywhere. The bus is trying to decide whether or not they should turn around and go in a different direction or go through the intersection. But we're going to get to Sherry in a moment. Look at how fast those waters are rolling down and it looks like they're tearing apart the street. Yeah, it's certainly our big, big story today, Kale. Let's get to our team coverage. Uh, thank you for joining us. I'm Kale Renaker. And I'm Kirsten Joyce. More rain, of course, in the forecast this morning as hundreds of thousands of students heading back to the classroom. A little bit of a curveball for the first day of yeah. school. We are under a flash flood watch until 8 o'clock tonight. More than a dozen people we know had to be rescued Sunday when the rain started coming down heavily, especially in the northwest part of the valley. Those people getting stuck in deep waters. Saw it right there. Now we want to make sure you know when to avoid getting on the roads if the same thing occurs today. We do have live team coverage with Lauren Rosella looking at the damage left behind by these storms. Sherry, of course, have the latest forecast, so we're going to kick things off with her. Sherry. Well, let's look at the radar and see what's going on. We've got cloudy skies out there this morning, not really getting the rain in the valley, but parts of Clark County have definitely been in the rain from Laughlin up through Searchlight and all the way to the northeast part of uh, Clark County. So uh, down south, uh, some embedded thunderstorms have just been skirting by to the very south end of Clark County. But again, we've been sitting here in the clouds kind of waiting for the rain. Looks like a few of these may have turned to some light showers on the very east side of the valley. But most of this has focused along I-15 up in northeast Clark County. So the northwest part of the valley has not had the rain this morning, a lot of that water flowing still coming out of the mountains where we picked up over four inches of rain up at Kyle Canyon yesterday. What we've seen overnight, 607 inch of rain now up around Overton. Mesquite's picked up some rain and again, even out to the Lake Mead area. A lot of 70s this morning, very pleasant temperatures, but humidity is very high, up over 80% in the north end of the valley. Camino El Dorado, look at Red Rock, 94% humidity. So kids, looks like it, it could be uh, somewhat of a wet start in some parts of Clark County this morning for the afternoon. The chance of rain and between now and then some of it could be very heavy. Kirsten and Kale, we are looking at uh, a flooding, a very real possibility again today with highs only in the 80s. So everybody be safe on your back to school Monday. That's for sure. We saw that bus out there earlier from Chopper 8. All this weather making it a very difficult first day of school. And we've just learned and confirmed that the Clark County School District's website is down right now. Not good news if you're mm -hmm. looking for a bus schedule for Perhaps school meals, website not running right now. It's not related to weather, but we do know that the commute to school is bumpy this morning. Yeah, Lauren Rosella live near Fort Apache and Brent Lane, where debris is covering the roadway there. Lauren. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is such an absolute chaotic mess out here. We have people out here that are trying to throw debris out of the roadways. We've got cars trying to navigate their way through these absolutely clogged. It's clogged with dirt, rocks, everything that you can imagine. It looks like an absolute landslide has just hit this area. We also had a Metro police officer just come out here and he was trying to throw some of the uh, larger, almost small boulders out of the roadway so drivers could get through but there's been a big a lot of big problems this morning as kids are heading off to the start of school as we found out many students were stuck just minutes ago now they were kind of stuck walking not only along the dirt and the muddy roadways but also some of their buses couldn't get through there was big confusion all around as groups of kids waited around to try and find out what to do it's crazy i mean we have to like we don't know where our bus is going to come, and it's all the way there, it's all the way here, we're walking back and forth. A man had told us that it was, like, bad up here, but when I saw it, there was a lot of dirt and mud and rocks. 
They did do okay, though, that we did see those kids finally board the bus, but floodwaters pushed debris like this onto the 95 Sunday. Drivers ended up stranded with many others on the overpass at 95 and Horse, where the freeway was shut down, and it's still shut down indefinitely this morning. Nevada Highway Patrol officers say large boulders were blocking the roadway going south, and flooding made it impossible for them to open the highway to the north. Now, Sunday, at least 900 customers were without power. We did call NV Energy and get a check on some of that. Now, we did find out that we have only about 60 customers without power still this morning. We're now reporting live. Lauren Rosella, 8 News Now. And just to remind people, she's actually at an intersection. She's not out in the middle of the desert. I know, Lauren. hard to believe looking at that video, right? Right. Lauren, thanks. And of course, we've had Brian, who's been monitoring the situation on the roadway since crack of dawn. We've got one really nasty accident out there at this hour. Yeah, we have one problem that's not upper northwest, and it's not rain related. It's an accident right here on I-15, the well-traveled southbound lanes of I-15, where a crash at Tropicana and the blinking lights of this injury accident lingering uh, right there on the shoulder of the freeway, still causing backups. The delays stretch all the way up to Sahara. Our glance here at our camera at 15 in Spring Mountain shows the difference on the left side of your TV between your northbound commute and the attempted southbound drive. Please avoid I-15 south, especially because now we're getting close to that peak commute. Uh, you can see all of the lanes are filled with cars moving at an average of 10 miles per hour or below. Problem intersections where flooding is happening now, Cimarron and Grand Teton. As we go to Ken and Chopper 8, Grand Teton and Buffalo, Iron Mountain and Fort Apache. And boy, it's a nightmare at Grand Canyon and Grand Teton, Ken, where we have a car that is in a bad place. Yeah, we got so much water coming down from the detention basin, the Kyle Canyon uh, wash detention basin, that it just kind of spills down here on the Grand Teton, and it's turning this into the Grand Teton River here, the Grand Teton River right below us here, where you can see this vehicle. Obviously, uh, this is probably one of the uh, swift water rescues that happened uh, yesterday. I believe this car has been out here for quite some time. Uh, as our one of our folks at the station pointed out, the good thing they had that uh, sunroof to actually escape from this uh, flooding waters. But all this water continues to flow downhill toward U.S. 95 and also from a long distance viewpoint I'm going to shoot way off into the distance you can see right here in your Grand Teton and Durango I'm going to let me uh, zoom in a little bit here and you can see all this water and mud debris making its way along Grand Teton uh, between uh, Buffalo and Durango this whole area is a mess and it is shut down by Metro and here's where all the water's coming from this is one of the biggest attention basins here with the regional flood control uh, control district and you can see that water just uh, holding up there and that's a good thing because it's actually being controlled release as we go back back out here live right about here so all the water comes out from that detention basin makes its way on the Grand Teton and heads downhill I question the uh, design of this whole project here in this one area because all this water comes out and then it turns into a giant mess resulting in that swift water rescue and the boat and that car getting stuck that's a lesson from up here we'll send it back downstairs Ken thank you very much it is the first day of school and one man with uh, plenty riding on his shoulders this year that's right he's the new leader of the Clark County School District of course we're talking Pat Skorkowski out live with us this morning Patroni Poonswan has caught up with him on already a very very busy yep. morning with some challenges at this point Patronia. Yeah, that's right. First day of school, of course, the best person to talk to when it comes to things school related is the brand new superintendent himself, Pat Skorkowski, who is here with us and it's already been a busy morning. You've been staying on 8newsnow.com app on our cell phone, seeing what's going on. What's happening out there with the rain? What are you hearing? Uh, the northwest part of the valley is the area that we're most concerned about. There are four schools out there that uh, the flooding that's gone across the streets is, is impacting their start times, but we've already sent parent link messages out to those parents to tell them, just take your time getting there school is open. We'll get you there safely and don't worry about getting there on time today if you can't make it. And a lot of parents are already getting on the website and I understand it crashed at one point because so many parents are on there, right? What's happening right now? It is back up and running. We just checked on our cell phones. Okay, so far so good. So this is your first year as superintendent, a big year for you. What are the big challenges out there? Obviously, you want to raise students' achievement, raise graduation rates. How do you plan to make that happen? Um, by better supporting our teachers and the people in the schools and really focusing in on getting them the resources they need to be successful, getting them professional development for instructional strategies to help deal with our second language population and, and all those challenges that we face with the implementation of Common Core. And from your experience, 25 years in the district, what can you bring? What do you think is most important from your experience you can bring to the classrooms this year? I think the understanding that I've been there. I know what it's like to be a teacher on the first day of school. Procedures and routines, that's what it is all day long. 
All right, coming from a teacher and parents, I'm sure would like to hear it. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you and have a great day. You too. Have a great school year. And for now, I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Petronia, thank you very much. First day for Clark County. We should also mention it is, of course, the first day at UNLV. That's right. As well. They all moved in last week. Mm -hmm. Record year of students living in the dorms and yep. being there. Yep. Well, a fire is burning out of control in California. The situation not good here. What makes the Rim Fire different from every other wildfire that's burning right now in the western U.S. and that fire very close to Yosemite. And we are still keeping an eye, of course, on the stormy weather. This picture sent in by Colton Moreno showing a man up to his chest in this water. Of course, you should never enter flooded areas because you never know what's beneath the surface. Stay with us on this Monday. Fire crews have yet to get a handle on this wildfire burning out of control near Yosemite National Forest, the Rim Fire. It's now the fastest growing wildfire in the nation. It's the size of Chicago, grown to nearly 144,000 acres, and it is only 7% contained. It's taken a lot of manpower to try to douse these flames. We've got more than 3,400 firefighters trying to put out these flames. This fire is so massive, it can actually be seen from space, and smoke from it has even drifted over into Reno. Bad situation there, and those firefighters could definitely use the rain that we've seen here in the valley the last 24 hours, and we may get more later today. Shadow Montalto, a viewer, sent us this video of flooding in the streets near Brent and El Capitan, one of the areas that we've been f following this morning. Look at that street just turned into a full-fledged river with all sorts of gunk flowing down in it. And crazy day yesterday. Certainly, Ken's been showing us some video of a car that was involved in one of those rescues yesterday that's made its way down that particular roadway. Good thing that uh, it was uh, I, the person was rescued safely. Yeah. It was yesterday when we first showed it. We weren't sure if it was this morning or yesterday. We may see more stuff later today, you two. Yeah, we just found another one, uh, Kalen, Kirsten, and oh Sherry. This goodness. is Grand Teton and Grand Canyon. We just showed one car that was stuck in the water, and a Grand Teton is like a river. This is another uh, white pickup truck, uh, That uh, another rescue situation. Yeah, you know, and again, Ken was showing the detention basin up there, and as it does it retain a lot of the water, holds it back, but eventually it has to release it. And unfortunately, as it's releasing it, it's overtaking some of the roads up there. And there are vehicles that either they were trying to get through it as it was flooding or it was not flooding at the moment and then caught in this high water. And that water hides in those ruts and grooves. And right now it's just free flowing right down the road. Yeah, let's hope that folks are going to be smart and stay out of those flooded roads as uh, much as they can and just go around. We've got a flood watch for uh, the heavy rain that's expected over Clark County and actually counties going all the way down to the Mexico border, if you will, because we've got, again, all of the remnants of what was Tropical Storm Evo off the west coast that's just pumping this tropical moisture. Jet Dynamics, fo focused on eastern Clark County, is keeping the rain to the east of the Las Vegas Valley and along I-15 and southward through Clark County and into Southern California into San Bernardino County this morning. So if we didn't have that enhancement from the uh, jet stream focused in the east of us, we'd probably have the rain for us this morning, but it's not making its way here yet. It's been less than a tenth of an inch so far up in the northeast part of the Clark of Clark County, but eventually we'll get in on some of the rain too. Unfortunately, up in Yosemite, they're looking for wind gusts as high as 40 miles an hour. They'll get the wind. They'll stay dry there. But for us, we are looking for the chance for showers eventually moving into our area with some very heavy rain again today. So Brian, hopefully everybody stay safe today. The afternoon commute could be a wet one. What's going on this morning and the rest of the commute? First, a good morning to UNLV students and faculty. As you go to campus, I wish you the best of luck. I've tweeted all your parking and travel tips at Brian Loft to say one thing you want to do if you're up north is avoid I-15 southbound. You have big time delays because of this accident which still resides in the shoulder. Multiple car accident and we have the delays as our next camera will show on 15 south. You can see it's still a parking lot. It stretches all the way to Sahara. Switching now to our beat the traffic maps. A reminder State Route 157 portions of it washed away as Ken showed earlier and it is completely closed in those portions that washed away. Look at the delay area. A range of six 16 miles per hour and those delays all the way to Sahara. Now let's go to Ken. He showed us a few minutes ago that Grand Teton has become a river. Buffalo also is getting the blues. Ken? 
Yeah, we also have issues over there at Buffalo at Grand Teton with additional flooding, but we're still over here. This is going to be right at Grand Teton in Fort Apache. Uh, once again, showing this uh, pickup truck that was trying to go westbound on Grand Teton and definitely uh, didn't make it any farther than that as he uh, got stalled out here. Had to do a water rescue for these folks here. All this water continues to roll downhill. It eventually goes into a drainage system here to cross underneath US 95, and then it pops back up over around Durango and floods Grand Teton all over again, and all the water is coming from here. This is the giant detention basin that actually protects these homes. If it wasn't for this detention basin, this giant wall of water would have slammed into nearby homes, but you can see some of the mud flow and the debris that is just icky and gooey and all inside this giant detention basin as I shot from this earlier video. So we'll continue to kind of look around up here. We'll get head over to Buffalo and uh, Grand Teton next, and we'll show you some live pictures coming up. Guys, we'll send it back to you. All right, which we remind people are roads, not rivers, even though they look like rivers this morning. The pictures, in fact, this morning still incredible yeah they really are but people were not turning around straight ahead the truck we caught trying to make it through floodwaters 51 past the hour on this monday Ken and Jeff Parade has been showing us amazing video all morning long. We did want to take a moment to show you this video from Ken as well from yesterday of this semi making its way through the flooded intersection. Of course, this driver did not pay attention to the advice, turn around, don't drown. He did make it through, but again, we do want to take this moment to warn people, don't try that. And we've seen a lot of cars that didn't make it mm -hmm. through, and they're stuck. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're seeing it again this morning, so be careful. A lot more rain where yesterday's came from, but right now we've been in the clouds in Las Vegas while well, Eastern Clark County, Southern Clark County has been getting some good rain. Here's the radar. While you see it moving up, I've got some holes. We see some holes there. Some of the uh, rain showing some embedded thunderstorms. So there's a lot more where this came from to the south. So kids heading out this morning, well, you're fortunate that you don't have the rain falling right now here in Las Vegas. But schools in Mesquite down to Southern Clark County in the rain this morning. We could see it this afternoon. Highs only in the 80s today. Good chance of rain tomorrow, low 90 and a slight chance left for showers in the mid to upper 90s to finish off the first full week of back to school. Brian? Thanks so much, Sherry. 15 southbound, still an issue, everybody, because of the accident at Tropicana. Although it is off on the shoulder, people glance over, and you have the looky-loo delays still at Spring Mountain Express lanes starting to pick up speed, but the general purpose lanes are still pretty clogged up. Right up to Ken and Chopper. Hey, Ken, I'm glancing at your monitor. Did I see a person who's newly stuck there who is just uh, asking for some help, it looks like? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. We were uh, so, there's so much to see this morning. I got a little distracted. Uh, this is going to be right here at Whispering Springs at Tanea. Looks like a Mercedes and a lady inside. She's actually stuck there in the middle of the intersection. All this water is originating from that detention basin up there where Kyle Canyon Creek actually comes on down. And there it is, all the water making its way down here. And it continues on down Tanea Way all the way down here to Farm Road. It is a giant muddy mess throughout this area as cars are continuing to try to make their way through this area. They really shouldn't be doing this. Remember the reminder as we drive around the valley here this morning, turn around, don't drown. As you can see, this entire stretch here this morning of roadway is completely underwater. That's the latest from up here. We'll continue to follow this developing story throughout the day. Coming up right after the break, your top stories, and you're seeing the top story right here as we speak here on 8 News Now. All right, welcome back. First day of school, and Brian, Sherry, Kirsten, we have a car stuck. Yes, and many wow. stuck in the Northwest Valley. Uh, I tell you what, kick in the alternate of Elkhorn because Grand Teton Farm and Buffalo are looking a lot like this. We understand Arborview High School, part of it flooded on the first day of school, but yeah. they are still going to try and, and, and get classes underway there. Yeah. yeah, we haven't had rainy. We haven't had rain, Kirsten. This is water being released from a detention basin up in the northwest mm -hmm. that was being held from all the tremendous rainfall yesterday, but it's being released and it's going through the neighborhoods and it's flooding and holding people back from getting to where they need to be today. And some intersections, as you, if you were with us earlier, that were dried out are now a, a mosh pit yeah, of boulders, really rocks, mud, those also a situation. Ken's been showing us. Ken, if you want to pipe in here, what you've been seeing is people make their way out of their neighborhoods. They're just not avoiding the warnings, are they? No, they're not avoiding the warnings here. Folks trying to get to Arborview High School are going to have a tough time throughout the morning with roads all around the high school itself are flooded. We'll have more coming up at 725 here on 8 News Now. And possibility of more rain, so we'll see you in a few minutes.